Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. So as many of you are already aware of, CMU 1.14 has now been released. This emulator version contains tons of fixes and also contains the complete texture cache rewrite that many of us have been waiting for for months. In this video, I'm going to be going over all of the major talking points discussing exactly what has changed in this new CMU emulator version. There is quite a lot to discuss and talk about, so let's get straight to it. Okay, so the majority of the changes in this CMU version release are graphics or GX2 related. There are tons and tons of fixes that will not only help NVIDIA GPU users, but also will massively benefit AMD and Intel GPU users also. The first of these major fixes is the fact that they have completely fixed the Mulduga sand effect. This creature is one of the enemies you would encounter in the Gerudo desert. Previously, on all other working CMU versions, when this creature was below the sand, all of the sand that it would throw up above it was completely distorted and not rendered correctly to how it should be on the Wii U or the Nintendo Switch. Thankfully, this issue is now completely fixed. Another problem that lots of people reported throughout the last few months of Simu was the fact that in the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild shrines, any of the monks that give you the orbs would have these weird blocky graphical issues present on them. This is now completely fixed in Simu 1.14.0 also. Staying on some graphical fixes, they have also completely fixed the teleportation bug that would give a strange outline on Link's character model. Previously, in a version of CMU from about 4 to 6 months ago, they thought they had this fixed, but unfortunately, upon playing the game for about 30 minutes, the problem would just resume happening. Thankfully, in 1.14.0, upon some extensive testing, I can indeed confirm that this problem no longer happens. The next major graphical and GX2 fix is the fact they have vastly improved the garbage collection logic of the texture cache. This basically means that for one, you're going to get no more VRAM leaks, and two, due to the fact that you're no longer leaking your VRAM, your performance will not steadily decline the longer you play any of your games on the emulator. This VRAM leak has especially given a very nice performance boost to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, especially so when playing for extended periods of time. Regardless of the fact that it does give a nice boost to this game when playing, as I said, for a very long period, it will also help with practically every game that you play for over 50 minutes. Now, some of you may already be aware of the fact that if you left CMU any version before 1.14.0 idle for about 45 minutes, it would begin dumping its textures in order to stop this VRAM leak from happening. Since, as I've previously said, this VRAM leak is no longer a problem, this dumping of textures after 50 minutes will no longer happen in CMU. To be honest, at least in my experience and in my use case, I didn't have too much of a problem or too bad of an experience with this texture dumping. However, it is still very nice to see that these problems have all been completely ironed out and now if you wish to do so, you can leave your game idle. Okay, so let's get back on topic and discuss some more fixes that have been given to us in this version. We have seen significant improvements to primitive RECT emulation. This improvement has especially so fixed Ninja Gaiden games on the Wii U and it also helps with some games that were previously being rendered upside down or mirrored. The next change that they have given to us is a fairly significant one and one that a lot of AMD GPUs are going to be happy about. They have completely fixed the shader cache being ignored by AMD drivers. This means that any CMU emulator user that was previously using an AMD GPU and was basically forced to use version 1.12.0 can now upgrade to this latest 1.14.0 version and take advantage of all of the new optimizations we have been given in in the past few releases. As well as these fixes to shader caches for AMD GPU users, these GPU users will no longer need to use any of the graphical fix graphics packs. For anybody who is not aware, practically every single AMD GPU user would previously have to turn on two fix graphics packs, one that would fix these weird light circles that would happen throughout the game at any light source, and they would also have to turn on the AMD shadow fix that would be required in order to have properly rendered shadows in game. Thankfully, all of these bugs have now been fixed in CMU Emulator, so AMD GPU users are no longer required to use these packs. 
if CMU user reports are anything to go by, these shadow fixes for AMD GPU users have also benefited anyone that is playing CMU emulator and using an Intel iGPU. If you yourself use an iGPU and have CMU emulator version 1.14.0 available, do let me know down in the comment section what your experience is on this new version. So while yes, there are lots and lots of fixes for AMD and Intel GPU users in this CMU version, do not be afraid Nvidia GPU users, we have also seen some significant updates that are going to help you also. If you, like myself, are an NVIDIA user and you have played The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild for extended periods of time, you should be well aware of the fact that there are weird artifacts that can happen on the surfaces of water and on the surfaces of lava. Now, while we have had workarounds that do indeed fix these issues, at least to some degree, pretty much every time you reinstalled your GPU driver you would have to reapply this fix and to be honest, that was just a pain in the ass to have to do every single time. Thankfully, in this new CMU release, all of these NVIDIA glitch artifact issues have been completely fixed. Moving away from vendor-specific issues, they have also added support for stream out in geometry shaders, they have fixed the slowdown when rendering point primitives. This mainly affects users that play Mario Kart on either Super Bell Highway or Toad's Turnpike, and it also affects slowdowns in games like Fatal Frame 5, Maiden of the Black Water. The final GX2 or graphical fix that we have in this CMU version is actually something that accidentally got added in the last version of CMU emulator itself. Now, a lot of people both in my community, the CMU community, and also on CMU's official Reddit have been reporting that when they load their shader caches for the first time, their games would just crash and they would not be able to proceed into gameplay. Thankfully, in this new CMU version, that problem is now completely fixed, and while I myself didn't experience this crashing problem, it is good to see that they were able to debug it and figure out exactly what its cause was. Okay, so there are some final smaller changes which should also help with quality of life on CMU emulator. The first one, while not really a quality of life change, is an optimization to the PPC cores or CPU JIT of CMU emulator itself. This hopefully means that we will be seeing a nice performance boost on this new version and when I do my testing in the next day or so I will let you guys know exactly what kind of performance in a percentage improvement you can expect on this new emulator version. Keep your eyes peeled for that video on the channel in the next day or so. Moving on to some changes with graphics packs, they are going to have V2 versions of graphics packs that are no longer compatible with CMU 1.14.0 marked as outdated and they will also be highlighted in red. This will hopefully help with some of the confusion around 1.14.0 due to the fact that lots of graphics packs that would have worked in any previous versions will not work with this one. The most prevalent graphics packs that are not going to work with this version are the resolution graphics packs. If you're not aware, you are going to need brand new resolution packs in order to get them to work with this new emulator version. As always, I will be doing my full setup guide where I will let you know absolutely everything that you need in order to have the best possible performance in CMU. Moving on to some input related changes that we are seeing in 1.14.0, they have fixed touch input on the separate gamepad window and have also improved the dead zones for the emulated thumbsticks on all of the emulated control pads. Hopefully these fixes to the dead zones will help any CMU users that previously had any problems with drifting on their thumbsticks. The last significant change that we are seeing in CMU version 1.14.0 is the fact that they have added an SND user HLE implementation. Basically all that this means is that lots of virtual console titles should now have working audio on a CMU emulator in this new release. So there we go guys, all of the major changes and updates coming in a CMU emulator in its version 1.14.0. In my honest opinion, this is probably the most significant update for CMU emulator in probably the last year or so. When you consider all of the new graphical fixes and changes for both AMD, Nvidia and Intel iGPU users, this is a very significant update to this emulator indeed. 
Also, when you consider the fact that this new texture cache is going to be paving the way for the implementation of Vulkan API in CMU Emulator, this just makes this new CMU version even the more exciting. Now, obviously, while Vulkan isn't going to be implemented in this iteration of CMU, we are hopefully going to see it in the next few months, at least in some kind of work-in-progress format. The developers of CMU Emulator itself have already given us some hints to the fact that when they are developing and implementing the Vulkan API into CMU, they are going to be doing a very similar thing to what they did with this texture cache rewrite and 1.14.0 version. They have told us that they will possibly be doing another work in progress release version, so they will basically be developing this Vulkan API once it is ready for users to actually get their hands on with and give hopefully all CMU users access to it so that we can test and make it the best possible implementation that we possibly can. Hopefully we'll hear some news about Vulkan API's implementation sooner rather than later. As always, once we know about it, I'll make sure to let all of you guys know as soon as possible. So let me know down in the comment section of this video which feature of 1.14.0 you are most excited about. As always guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.